study my name's d this is my wife millie so if you like what you see subscribe and hit the notification bell and if you wish to reach out to us you can email us at devoted to ya at gmail.com shabbat shalom everyone happy sabbath day we are in exodus chapter 11 Starting at verse one, and it says, And Yahuwah said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. Afterward, he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will surely drive you out of here altogether. Speak now in the hearing of the people and let every man ask from his neighbor, and every woman from her neighbor, articles of silver and articles of gold. And let every man ask from his neighbor and every woman from her neighbor, articles of silver and articles of gold. And Yahuwah gave, to, uh, gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. Uh, we will do some cross-references on that. Go ahead, Milo. I have one cross-reference. Um, back in Exodus 3, verses 21 and 22, it says, I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it will happen that when you go, you shall not go empty-handed. But every woman shall ask of her neighbor and of who visits her house, articles of silver and articles of gold and clothing, and you shall put them on your sons and on your daughters, so you shall plunder the Egyptians. So this was early on when Yehu was talking to Moses. Go. All right, so with those scriptures, Exodus 3, we see a prophecy that Yehu was going to uh, give favor to the Israelites and have them receive objects of uh, such as silver and gold from the Egyptians. And here we're seeing that prophecy come to pass. Um, and who did Yahuwah use to speak this prophecy? Moses. So that would, I don't know, seems pretty consistent. Moses is a prophet. You know, you got these, he's hearing directly from Yahuwah. He says something's going to happen today. And it happens. Locusts, frogs, smoke, darkness, all this type of stuff is happening. This is how you determine if somebody's a prophet or not. You look at their resume. You look at their track record. And Moses has definitely built a great track record so far. Uh, it's not his doing. It's, it's Yahuwah's doing. Yahuwah chose him. This is a calling that he had on his life. And he's just walking in it. Uh, let's see here. And verse 3, And Yahuwah gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great. In verse 3, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. Yahuwah elevated Moses' status in a foreign nation. Verse 4, then Moses said, thus says Yahuwah, at about midnight, this is very important to know the timing of stuff, at about midnight, so this is way after evening, at midnight, I will go out into the, into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the female servant who is behind the handmill. And all the firstborn of the animals. You have something? Go ahead. So I want to get into why would Yahuwah be, quote unquote, so harsh with the firstborn of um, the children of uh, Egypt? So let's go backwards to 
in Exodus chapter 1, verses 15 to 16. Can you take my paper? It says, The king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives. I'm sorry, my little baby over here is trying to grab the mic. The king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives of whom the name of one was Sifra and the name of the other Pua. And he said, when you perform the duty of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a son, then you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, then you shall save, uh, then she shall live, excuse me. So the Egyptians over here had killed our people or you know, our ancestors or actually not even just the first one, they were just killing all the males at one point and casting them into the river quite sadistically. So I just want to go back as to why this plague would come up. Verse six. Then there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as was not like it before, nor shall be like it again. But against none of the children of Israel shall a dog move its tongue. But against none of the children of Israel shall a dog move its tongue against man or beast that you may know that Yahuwah does make a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. You said make a sound? Sorry, so in verse uh, 6, it says, Then there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as not like before, nor shall it be again, but against none of the children of Egypt shall a dog move its tongue. It's not even going to bark. Dogs are known for barking. So it's not even, there's not even going to be, there's going to be a great cry in the midst of Egypt. But in Israel... There won't be such a cry. There won't right. be a, a, a sound that you're about to, that's going to come to the Egyptians. I receive that. That makes sense. I receive that. Uh, and all these, your servants, shall come down to me. So the servants of the Egyptians will come down to me and bow down to me, saying, get out. And all the people who follow you, after that, I will go out. Then he went out from Pharaoh in great anger. So just wanted to point out real quick, even to the point uh, these, these Egyptians will be humbled to the point of even bowing down before Moses. It says, and all these your servants shall come and bow down to me. So it seems like this announcement is not only being made to the Israelites, but at some point in the story, it's also being given to the Egyptians. So he's giving them a heads up. I'm a guy with a reputation. So far, everything that I said, what happened has happened. And here I'm telling you something else is going to happen. And you guys are going to bow down to me and finally let me go. Um, see, when you're a prophet, you could talk like that. <laughs> Verse nine, but Yahuwah said to Moses, Pharaoh will not heed you so that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. This is, uh, for me, I, I pointed out, this is the why. Why is this happening? Why did Yahuwah have to do all this? Why couldn't he just, why couldn't he just rescue the Israelites, just simply just touch Pharaoh's heart to let them go? Why, why did he have to do all this stuff? Well, the answer is right here. Yahuwah said, Pharaoh will not heed you, so that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. For whatever reason, Yahuwah wanted his wonders to be multiplied. He wanted to magnify his supernatural miracles and wonders in the land of Egypt. And this is a way that he did it. He used it by making e uh, the Egyptian leader very stubborn and hard in the heart. He, he was also, I think by that, he was also multiplying his exceeding kindness and mercy and long suffering and endurance with Egypt that he didn't destroy them immediately for not, because Yahuwah could have easily destroyed Pharaoh and all the Egyptians for simply not obeying his voice the first time. You took my children and you made them slaves. I'm asking you to let them go. The moment they, did, they didn't let them go, Yahuwah could have destroyed them. But what did Yahuwah do? He gave them a second chance. He gave them a third chance. He gave them a fourth chance. He gave them a fifth, a sixth. What is this? Tenth. We're up to the tenth chance. 
So while Yahuwah multiplied his wonders, I think he's also multiplying his mercy and his endurance. Verse 10, but it runs out. His kindness has a expiration date. Verse 10, so Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, and Yahuwah hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the children of Israel go out of his land. Uh, one last note I'll say on this. Uh, there, are, there is scripture that says that Pharaoh hardened his own heart. And so uh, some people debate over this, whether it was Yahuwah who hardened his heart. And we talked about this in previous videos early on. But um, to be fair, there is, Yahuwah can do whatever he wants. He can, he can choose to change anybody's heart that he wants outside of that person's will. He has the power and the authority to do that. He created us. He can change our minds. He can override the free will of man. Um, at the same time, the free will of man does exist as well. Um, it is very possible that the reason why Yahuwah hardened Pharaoh's heart was because Pharaoh hardened his own heart first. I've heard this example. I'll leave that in the air as an option. But I'm not going to say it's not an option that Yahuwah is not the one that had this all planned to begin with. He's the one that hardened his heart to not let the people go, to not listen to him. Why? So that he can get glory and fame for all the mighty wonders that he did. So that when Moses says, hey, the God of Israel, Yahuwah, is going to do this, the Egyptians, the Israelites, all the people listening to this are not guessing which God is doing all these things. Is this the Hindu God? Is this the God of Zeus? Is this Ra? Is this the, you know, Egyptian God? The goddess is doing this miracle? There's no question because Moses has come with the name. He says, Yahuwah, I come in the name of Yahuwah, and Yahuwah is doing all these things. The God of the Hebrews, the God of the Israelites. So there's no question which God is doing these miracles. So I think, I think that was all part of Yahuwah's plan. Uh, to be known specifically who he is and his character and his will. And this is going to show up countless times later on that the nations are fearing because they're like, oh, the God of the Hebrews, what he did to Egypt. So we this is going to, you guys. yeah, so this is going to be repetitious. It's going to come back into the, um, um, it's going to come back into the picture later on in history. So this yep. is huge. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Definitely huge. Absolutely. So that is Exodus chapter 11. 11. We don't have anything else, right? Mm -hmm.